do. Uh, team's been flying lately. Can you keep this great run going? Uh, there's more to come. There is more to come from this team. We've literally just started the the, the, the league. So I hope there's more to come. Otherwise, I'd be a bit concerned. Um, okay, so we'll dive into this Stoke City game. So what we will do is have a flick on the team management. And again, we'll just use these uh, substitute players. Uh, give them a bit of game time. So what we want to do is Martinelli out there on the left. Smith row. Zinchenko coming in. Tommy Yasu. There's so much young talent in this team. It's it bodes very, very well for for Arsenal's future. Uh, Nelson definitely earned himself a start there. I think who should we bring in in that DM role? Because I wanna I wanna give Partey a little rest because he's he's a bit knackered really. That's definitely where we need to strengthen in the transfer window. So that's a position we need to look at at central defensive midfield because we don't have any kind of back up for that uh, did I send the congrat alone I think I sent the congrat alone that's probably a bit stupid of me because um, we do need him as as an option um, who should we play in there let's just bring in this Smith guy yeah he looks like about yeah he, he'll do for now um, it's only Stoke City isn't it so that's how they're going for the 5-3-2 uh, I'll be honest with you the only, record, the only names I recognise in there are, are Gales and Dwight Gale and Sam Klukas, who seems like he's been knocking about forever. So let's get this underway. So it is raining um, for Stoke Away, which is quite funny. Of course, it would be raining for, for Stoke Away. Let's go. Let's get this underway. So the stadium is buzzing already, apparently. Here it is. Look at the state of this. Very rainy night at Stoke City. The music is dramatic. The action, is next. The action will be here. Mikel Arteta preparing his celebration ready. He knows what's coming. It should be a, a routine game for us. should be quite straightforward. Um, we'll see how we get on. So here we go. Look at this. Look, this looks miserable. What a cauldron of sadness. Let's get it. Uh, one day I'll remember. I will remember to do that. The Carabao Cup. We're live. Let's get it. So Dwight Gale he had a bit of a mixed mixed career himself, actually, isn't he? He's uh, kind of he's been a bit up and down. He's one of those who always thrived in the championship. When it comes to the Premier League, not quite hit the ground hit the ground as he as he should be. Uh, he's had a few clubs, been playing at Newcastle United, playing at Crystal Palace, but never really hit the the heights of of his potential and what he could be doing, um, unless it was in in the championship so um, so there's always there's something exciting about those championship strikers you never know where they're going to they're going to sink or swim uh, we've seen those who have absolutely thrived with the likes of Alexander Mitrovic and Ivan Tony those who were elite in the championship and then continue to be elite very very good saver from Ramsdale um, but with Mitrovic and, and Tony I think because they're such physical phenomenons I think they're kind of their success was inevitable um, again good take from Ramsdale I think the problem for Dwight Gale is that physically he doesn't offer anywhere near as much as, as those players do so I think it kind of very easy to get him bullied in the game um, and obviously we've seen what Mitrovic has been doing at Fulham at the moment started the season with a massive surprise good strike from him also throw there to find the back of the net um, but yeah Fulham started extremely well I think they kind of took some surprise points well, from a lot of players but um, I think they've, they've calmed well, down now I that was very very good strike from him with throw there he's, he's scored a couple of goals for us now it'd be good to see him back in real life and it's very good to see him kicking off here so 1-0 the score, so one the score. <laughs> beautiful and Martinelli it's a good take but not a good pass 
dominant again. It's, it's, they're five at the back. It's looking difficult to, to exploit on the wings, which is where we normally thrive, but obviously that does leave them a bit limited when it comes to going forward, so it works in our favour ultimately in terms of controlling the game. I uh, can't actually see the rain anymore, interestingly. It's, the rain's kind of faded out of camera, so pass the ball backwards, rebuild an attack, try again. What do you mean try again? Is that kind of like a rewind feature? Like the Matrix. It's gone wrong, we're just going to rewind it. <laughs> or slow down, oh, it's the Matrix slow down time, isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, here we are. Smith throws ball forward into Reese Nelson, takes well, but does not take the second touch very well. Wow, that pressure on, that's it, good. Good inception there from Smith. The young lad stepping in for Thomas Partey just to give him a break because he has been playing literally every game, I think. So um, that's what you need from your defence midfielder. That kind of consistency. Good strike from Zinchenko there, actually, of all people to, to give us that second goal. Um, but as I said before, that problem with Partey is his fitness. He, he's very, very injury prone, but when he's here, he's, he's brilliant. Um, so what I will do is just get some more scouts going in to kind of look at who we want to fill that DM role. Whether we want that to be Wilfred and Didi, I don't know. Uh, but I think, I think that's kind of an area that's lacking almost. I think up and coming um, DMs is kind of an area to focus really, other than Declan and Rice, of course. He's a player we could look at depending on his price, but you know, all, all the kind of defensive midfielders of getting on a bit now you're talking about Casemiro you're talking Smith. about Sergio Busquets um, talking about Rodri none of these are, are young players now um, so we just to see what, what the next generation holds I think Declan Rice will very firmly be in that that role just wide from Fabio Vieira there um, but yeah so I think Declan Rice maybe might be one that we have to at least have a sniff around and just see what, what kind of asking price West Ham will want for him um because in real life, he has, <laughs> interestingly, he has voiced his concern or his desire to, to want some Champions League football whilst still at West Ham, which is a bit of a concerning statement to make, um, especially if you're a fan, not something I'd want to be hearing. I think he's um, very much a, a fan favourite there at West Ham because of what he's kind of become at such a young age under the tutelage of, of Mark Noble. A uh, respected veteran of that club. He's had a lot of guidance from him. Good save there. Uh, um, had a lot of guidance from Mark Noble. Um, and has, has more than stepped into his boots. He's becoming the next kind of solid centre defensive midfielder for West Ham. But it's about for how much longer for. Um, and there's a lot of talk of Chelsea being interested um, as one of the options. Um, but I think any big club will, will certainly be looking at, at that situation there with Declan Rice. And just what I wanted to be. So there we go. First 45 minutes over. Uh, two nil, I believe it is. A solid start. No, again, nothing to really worry about here. Don't want to make any changes. So let's just get back out there in rainy Stoke. Let's see what we can what we can do in the second half. Here. So yeah, come to hit the nail on the head. There we have, we have been dominant yet again. Um. This isn't the focus for us, the Carabao Cup. Uh, it's more of a bit of a nice to have, but we'll see how that how that goes. Oh, just wide from Smith Row. He's popping up in a lot of key areas. Um, I mean, Jack is performing well in this career mode, but you know, if, if things drop off for him, then Smith Row is a very good option to s slot into that left hand side of, of central midfield. Uh, Odegaard firmly is going to hold his place on the right side but that left side is kind of slightly more up for debate with Granit Xhaka um, so we'll, we'll look at that situation but again a nice headache to have but we just have endless amounts of talent in, in much every area Fabio Vieira is kind of I think he's struggling at the moment he's struggling to adapt Definitely not in real life. He's adapting extremely well in real life, but in this game, he doesn't feel like he's quite what we need. Reese Nelson charging through. Good ball through to Martinelli. Good save again from the keeper. 
But the, again, the build-up play, amazing. We're sliced them open like butter here. This is a very, obviously a very physical side. Arguably the most physical game you will ever play. Stoke away. Uh, it's kind of renowned for it, especially on a rainy day. Um, but the boys are holding their own out there, despite the, the youth. That Smith not really kind of paying any attention there. Eh? He doesn't care. He's just watching the game go by him. Now the defenders are peeling for offside, but he's not. So we will play on. Vieira makes the look for Nelson's run, finds him perfectly. That's where Nelson thrives. Good save again from the keeper. Nelson's got to be scoring that. I'm lacking his trim a lot. He's got to be bagging that, but it's a very good save. That's a top save. Um, so yeah, Fabio Vieira, where we want him is playing in that final final ball. We don't want him on the end of that final ball because we've seen just how poor his finishing is. A very audacious effort there from Gabriel Martinelli trying the, the scissor kick slash bicycle kick from the corner. It was, it was a good effort. Uh, it certainly had the connection it needed, but just not the accuracy. So, Harry Suta, if I remember rightly, I think I remember him, another player who's a centre-back for Stoke, a typical Stoke player. Uh, I think Harry Suta is Australian, and I think he might be six foot seven or six foot eight. Um, so, definitely a, a Stoke-type player. Struck wide from Minketia, that was a very good chance for him. That's not something we're used to seeing from him. We're used to seeing him bulge in the back of the net with those rockets, but... Not today, he sliced that one wide. It might just be because of the rain and the slippage on the ball. So, we're, for some reason, we're kind of sat off them a little bit there, kind of leaving them to push the push players up. And we're kind of we're almost hitting Stoke on the counter, which is not what we're expecting. It's going to have to be the opposite. So, there is that Harry Sutar. I think he, I generally think he might be six for eight or something. Um, obviously, just a, an absolute giant, and as I say, it kind of fits Stoke's big physical philosophy. Um, there's a bit of bad blood between Arsenal and, and Stoke after an incident involving Ryan Shawcross, everybody's favourite centre back, um, and Aaron Ramsey. So there was an incident where a brutal, brutal tackle from Ryan Shawcross came in and. Um, Actually broke Aaron Ramsey's leg. Very good goal there. That was absolutely stunning. The build-up, finish spot on. Um, so yeah, poor challenge. Broke Aaron Ramsey's leg. Um, and interestingly, the Stoke fans decided to boo us for that. Um, I'm, I'm honestly not sure why. But they, they broke our man's leg, and, and then I guess the Arsenal fans gave him the lot of abuse for that, and they, their response was to give it straight back. Um, and something that the commentary always always thrived on was, as I said previously, Arsenal were kind of always labelled as having poor physicality and, and Stoke are the very embodiment of physicality. Um, so they're kind of natural rivals. It was an interesting, interesting clash every time they would play um, with the spoils primarily going to Arsenal. Um, but they did steal the odd point, but... Nothing too concerning. Nothing too concerning. Um, so Stoke have got a goal back. I'm not worried about that, to be honest. We've looked very good in this game and continue to look good. Nelson through again. Does strike, but not quick enough. The defender's too hot on his heels to allow that shot to come off. Um, do you see what I mean? If you look there at the bottom, we're sat quite deep. And I'm not sure why that is, because the depth is quite high. So I'm not sure what that is. It might just be a kind of tactic. Self-inflicted, I don't know. But we're hitting Stoke on the counter, which is interesting. Good tackle to Zinchenko. Marcel into Smith Row. Play it out wide again. Not quite where I was aimed in there. I was looking to get that back to Marcel. Um, but there we have it. 3-1, a Carabao Cup win. We're through to the next round. We do go marching on. That's beautiful to see. So... Solid, solid performance yet again. Uh, we're going to skip into if you want to get out of Rangers Stoke as soon as possible because it is an absolute dive. We don't want to spend a minute here longer than we have to. Um, okay, right, I think that concludes for this part then, boys and girls. Thank you very much for tuning in.
Um, I hope you have a lovely, lovely day and I will see you in the next